Let's talk about the scan before we dive into any enumeration. So the scan here, we've got these open ports. We've got 22 with SSH, and we've got 80 and 443, which are hosting websites. And then we've got 139, which has got a file share with Samba on it. And then you've got the 111 and 32768, which are RPC and related to the SMB. So we need to think about point of attack as an attacker. Now, when I see this scan, I light up with 80 and 443, and I light up with 139, and sometimes you'll see 445 with it as well. I light up from those because those are commonly found with exploits. If we think back about all of the exploits that have been out there for a website, for example, or if we think to Samba or SMB-related exploits, just recently, right now, it's recording in 2019. In 2017, there was malware that went around called WannaCry, and that was based off of something called Eternal Blue, also known as MS17010. It was a pretty wicked exploit that utilized a flaw in SMB. SMB has been historically bad, and websites have been historically bad. Now, when we see something like port 22, port 22 is SSH, and historically, it hasn't really been that bad. Now, we can try attacks against it like brute force attacks, or we can try something like default credentials or root tor on it, for example. But when we look at it, we can maybe enumerate the version, but there's not usually what we call remote code execution on SSH. Remote code execution being that we can run an exploit against it and get something called a shell back. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the exploitation section. But for now, just know that it's not really common to attack SSH. So when I see SSH open, we can do some things at it. But when we talk about low hanging fruit, and that's really what we're after as an attacker, we're going to see what's juiciest first and kind of go from there. So you'll develop your own methodology over time. But I'm going to drill into your head at least my methodology, why I do things, and there will be several videos of walkthrough machines in this course. So you're going to get to see this over and over and over, and I'm just going to explain my methodology repeatedly so that you can get introduced to new tools and new ideas and ways of thinking. So from here, I do want to dive into my first thought process, which is... I want to investigate port 80 and 443. I would either here, I would do 8443 or I'd go right after 139. So we'll do 8443 and start working towards those. Now let's go ahead and just do the first step. This is always my first step. If I see a website, I'm just going to go out to the website. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this here. And I'm also going to go into the little hamburger and go to my preferences. And I have not turned off my burp suite settings, and it's possible that if you're just following along, you haven't turned it off either. So go ahead and just select Use System Proxy Settings, and we'll just say OK. And now we should be able to navigate to our website. I'll just open up a new tab just in case. We'll do something like this. Good, that worked. And then we'll do the HTTPS version because there's also 443. You might get something saying your connection's not secure. Just go ahead and say advanced and add an exception here. Confirm it, and you'll see this. Okay, so what we have here on both of these is we have a default web page. Now, when we talk about performing a network penetration test or even a web application penetration test, if we see a default web page like this, this is an automatic finding. Now, why is this a finding? It's, is it exploitable? No, not really. But it tells us a little bit of something about the architecture that's running behind the scenes. And it tells us a little bit about the client's potential hygiene. So if we see this, well, we know that it's running Apache. We know that potentially the box is running Red Hat Linux. And we're just getting ideas of what's going on behind the scenes. More so... If a client is running a default web page, it brings up two questions. One, are there other web directories behind this? So we'll show you something here in a second where we do directory busting and attempt to find a directory. Like say we're looking at this and we don't have anything to click on, but we say, you know, slash admin. Maybe that directory is there. 
okay, are they hosting a website somewhere else that's just not at this IP address on this base? Or maybe they aren't hosting any website and they just left 443 and 80 open for no reason and put this default web page out there. Now, when you think about that, that signals to an attacker poor hygiene. And I'm going to think to myself as an attacker, if a company or a client is willing to just put this out there willy nilly, what else are they doing? What potential vulnerabilities might they have if they're doing this? So this immediately signals poor hygiene. We would write this up on a test. And I'm going to show you guys my notes once we kind of get towards the end of the enumeration. So make sure you're taking good notes. And we can do that in like a little notepad here and kind of what we're doing. I think this is useful. And then I'll make a nice little keep note or you, you can make a cherry tree and make your own notes out of this. And I'll show you what it looks like towards the end of the enumeration. But we can say something like 80443. And then you can put the IP address. And sometimes people like to put notes at like what time they did this. So you could see up here it's 2258 or 1058 p.m. my time. And we could take that and we can just say default web page. And we can say Apache. And we could tell that it's running potentially PHP. And we'll get behind this as well. And we just have these little notes. So we know that we navigated to it, right? At least this is part of the enumeration here. And you don't have to timestamp everything. I'm just giving you that for an example. But we can see that it's running this default web page. So we have a default web page. There's nothing really for us to click on. I mean, we've got like the documentation. We can go to like, it looks like the manual might be here. And this here, we just clicked on a, a link and it was a bad link. Now this is also uh, what's called information disclosure. So this would be another one to bring up, but we see here that we have an error page and this error page is saying, hey, it's not found. Now this is typical of what's called a 404. And when you see a 404, you think, okay, it usually redirects you to a page that's like, hey, we can't find this. This is giving us a little bit more information than we should be getting. We're seeing here that we're getting Apache version 1.3.20. So now if we didn't know already, we do know that we're running Apache 1.3.20. And we got a host name here, keoptrix.level1. That is a internal information host name, right? So we can get naming convention out of a client. We could potentially know how they are utilizing naming conventions on their internal networks. And we've got some version enumeration or information disclosure. So this would be a screenshot as well that we would take a picture of. And you can also notate that in your notes and say something like, you'd say information disclosure And then you could say something like 404 page, and then you would just have your, your notes or a screenshot of this. And then that would indicate to you what you can write up on the report and kind of where you found it. So we can click around on this page, or we can do a little bit of what I like to do, which is vulnerability scanning. So I'm gonna introduce you to a, another tool which is called Nikto. So let's open up a new tab. We can close these two tabs out if you've got extra tabs like I do. And this tool is called Nikto. It's just like this. So Nikto is what is known as a web vulnerability scanner. This is a great tool when you're learning the beginning stuff, when you're practicing against VulnHub or you're practicing on a CTF or something like a hack the box, which I haven't introduced to you yet but it will help you do vulnerability scanning against the website. The issue is that if the website is running good security, you might run into some issues with that and it might actually auto block it if it detects Nikto scans. Not always. Very commonly, that's not the case. But if they've got good security or a good web application firewall, it might actually block these scans. So you have to kind of be wary when you use it and really use your hunch if you think that this client is using a, a web application firewall or not. 
And you'll really get a feel for the client just as you gain more practice. And once you're getting in there and you're starting to notice vulnerabilities or not, you'll kind of understand whether or not they're running something like that. So from here, we're just going to say Nikto. And you can always do a dash dash help, but it's pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is say a dash H for host. And then we're just going to say something like HTTPS. And then we'll just paste our, our address, something like this. And that one did not work. So let's go ahead and try HTTP and see. There we go. For some reason, it's not picking up the SSL on this. So I'm not sure why it's not discovering. But now we can see our scans kicking back. And immediately, we can see that it's doing some detections here. It's detecting that the server Apache 1.3.20 is running. It sees this mod SSL with open SSL. It's giving us some vulnerabilities back. It's telling us what is missing in terms of protections. Now, these protection headers, if we're doing an external penetration test, not really that important. If we're doing a web app penetration test, these become more important. But we don't have to worry about them right now. So when we come through, we keep looking and we see Apache 1.3.20 appears to be outdated. OK, mod SSL appears to be outdated. Open SSL appears to be outdated. These are all findings. Depending on how outdated it is, uh, a 1.3.20 to a 2.4.37 is pretty outdated. So these would be findings that we would notate on a report as well. Um, we can look through and you can see what types of attacks this might be vulnerable to. So one, if you're looking through, there's this Apache here that says remote denial of service. Well, typically denial of service is out of scope when we're doing a pen test, so we're not interested in that. Possible code execution, so maybe interested in that. We are also potentially interested in a overflow and rewrite, and this one says this is vulnerable to a remote buffer overflow, remote being important, which may allow a remote shell. So remote meaning we do not have to be local. So I skipped over this one where you see local, this one is remote, meaning we can run that against a, a site sitting in our pajamas in our house and that site's running somewhere else and we can do this all remotely. So immediately it's found potential vulnerabilities. So we've got this potential mod SSL vulnerability and it's come down here and it's looking at some other things. Uh, you could see that this trace method is active and we still haven't gotten into web app so really don't need to talk about it too much. But trace is potentially vulnerable when you have something like cross-site scripting, which you see up here. And that could lead to something called cross-site tracing, but you kind of need both of those. But again, that's just informational at this point. You don't have to really be taking notes on that. So we're coming through. It does a little bit of directory busting for us. So what that means is it's just going to come through here and it's going to run like a, a word list and that word list might have like admin usage manual right test.php it's got all these different items that it found doing this word list now we're going to do a little bit of directory busting here in a second so we'll save this scan and we'll keep this in our notes and we'll refer back to it here in a little bit but what we need to know is we can alt tab and we can get our text editor and we could say something about, let's just copy and paste this line here, that potentially this mod SSL is vulnerable. So let's copy that. And we'll, we'll put that into our text editor and we'll, we'll make that as a note. So we're still doing enumeration. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna do any exploitation until we get to the exploitation stage. So what we would do typically is we'll save this out to a file. So you might wanna like copy this, all this right here to show what you ran. And if I could copy, that would be really useful. So you copy this and you would just make maybe a directory and you can call this something like Keoptrix. And then we can CD into Keoptrix and then you could say gedit nikto.txt. And then you have your nikto scan saved. So this is part of being a good pen tester is saving all of your scans and having them available in case you need to go back for notes. So we'll save that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause here we're going to call this part one, and then we'll go into part two and talk a little bit more about directory busting and look at some other enumeration features that we have for this. And then we'll start focusing on other ports and really enumerate this box thoroughly 
before we work on exploitation. So I will catch you over in part two of this video and I'll see you when you get over there.